In the name of the Holy and Blessed Trinity revealed to us as the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier of the world. Amen. Do you remember the first time you were told no? Probably not. Do you remember the first time when someone said to you, come on now, you're too old for this, stop it? Maybe, but probably not. Do you remember the first time when someone said to you, that's not how a little girl, a little boy, a young person behaves. Again, maybe, but probably not. There is some invisible marker that exists between the joy of welcoming a child into the midst and the wonder that comes with the child exploring and discovering and the desire of the world to restrict that joy and wonder. It's not in any of the parenting books it's not something you learn in classes, but there is an invisible line which squashes joy and wonder. And the awful truth is, at times, all of us have been on that side of the line. I know myself as a parent, there have been times when I've said, come on now, you're old enough to know better. Old enough to know better than what? We're not talking about evil behaviours, we're talking about behaviours which are full of joy and wonder and delight and suddenly we say, actually, it's time you fitted into this box. We've let you be joyous and wonderful and creative and all that God has created you to be and you pass this mysterious line and now it's time to be, in the words of Star Trek, assimilated. And as I said, there's, there's no rule book, there's no guideline, but we know that's a truth. One of the things that has been really important to me in who I am as Catherine, child of God, and priest of God, has been ministry with children. Not ministry to children, but acknowledging that time spent with children is as much ministry received, if not more, than ministry given. And if we are prepared to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, then we can receive rich blessings rather than saying, oh, we don't do that. I've shared with you the story one of our family stories of when one of our children was very little and we'd had a significant family celebration. And at the end of the celebration, we were all exhausted. Everyone had left the house. And my husband and I were sitting on the lounge, totally spent. And one of our children came up to us with a bowl with scraps of potato chips in them and said in all seriousness, the body of Christ.
and then came back with some flat coke. Now they poured it into the cup. I don't even want to know where that cup came from because that's not the point of the story. The point is that they then gave us the cup and said, the blood of Christ. Now there's a part of us that says, oh, isn't that cute and darling? And there's another part of us that might be a little bit horrified and go, oh, you're playing at communion and you're using chips and Coke. But there's something far more profound in that, that in this moment, our child recognized that we had gathered together as family and something was missing from their understanding of what we did when we gathered together as family which was to share in our family meal. There is something deeply profound in actually being schooled by a child in that moment. Now we could have responded by saying, oh, don't be silly. But instead, I would like to think we responded with grace and reached out our hands to receive that which was reverently and sacredly placed into them. And we'll let the theologians worry about what was happening, if anything. But in that moment, in that moment, God was present. In the Gospel, as we see so often in the Gospels, people are trying to trip Jesus up on the legalities, on the box stuff, on the, this is how we do it, this is how you fit in. And in the end, Jesus' frustration overflows into taking a child. I remember my Greek lecturer saying, literally, it's like the children are running around the house and Jesus stretches out his arm as one runs past and swoops them up and plonks the child down in the midst and says, stop it, stop it. You've lost sight of what is most important. You're so busy arguing about the words and about what is and what isn't and what can be and what can't be that you've actually lost sight of the bigger picture which children know, which is the awe and the wonder and the love and the mystery of encountering the living God. At some point, you've lost that joy and you've replaced it with legalism. On the first Saturday night of every month, we have families at five. It is the most glorious and often chaotic worship that occurs in this place. Glory and chaos in equal measures. And when we come to share our family meal, the meal that Jesus gave to his friends and said, each time you get together, take bread, take wine, give thanks to God, break, share, remember. The children help me set the table, set the altar, and then they stay with me. Standing on tiptoes, peering up to see what is happening, to be involved. And last night, as I began the Thanksgiving prayer, as I do every time we share this holy meal, stretched out my arms, it's called the Aram's position, stretched out my arms and said, the Lord be with you. And a little child in their mother's arms grabbed hold of my hand here. It was the gentlest of touch and it was a surprise by joy moment. 
because that child understood in that moment that they were welcome, they were included, they were part of the story that this meal was for them because they were part of the family. And they wanted to be connected. They understood that this was not a hand of rebuff, but a hand of invitation and welcome. I will die on this hill about not losing our childlike joy and wonder in the presence of God. Now that doesn't mean that we have to have a childlike understanding of God or a childish understanding. That's something entirely different. God calls us, as Paul reminds us, we are fed at first with milk because we need to grow onto the solid foods and grow in our maturity as Christians. But that doesn't mean that we lose that sense of awe and wonder and sheer joy and delight. And later on in the service, when we were sharing that holy meal, that same child who grabbed hold of my hand looked with such joy when I placed the sacrament into their hands and said, the body of Christ. This wasn't rote, this wasn't repetition, this wasn't something they had to do. This was sheer joy. There's this invisible line where we lose the joy. There's this invisible line where we lose that wonder and delight, where we go, oh, it's time to go forward for communion again, or it's time to do this again. Instead of that absolute rejoicing in the presence of God. We are called to be people who are like a child. Not childish, as I said, but like a child. We are called to remember joy and delight and glory and mystery and wonder and awe. We are called to rejoice in it. We are called to be excited to be together. And that can be challenged because we've spent a lifetime being squished into a box that isn't the shape of us. Because God didn't make us as boxes. The psalmist reminds us, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So let us rejoice in all that God has made us and come before God's courts, God's table, God's people with thanksgiving and joy. Amen.